It's one of the most talked about, written about, argued about, fought about buildings ever built. Designed for a setting of sea and sun and water traffic. Moored to its site, like one of the great white ships which anchor in harbour bays. Over the years we've watched them grow. These strange shapes which have sprouted like concrete flowers on Sydney's waterfront. Shapes have no functional basis. Una bellissima opera poetica. Why on earth put opera in a thing like that? Terrific. Ugly. Gee, it's beautiful. What is it? Danish architect Jörn Utzen's design caused controversy when it won a worldwide competition in 1957. Controversy has ebbed and flowed about it ever since. A series of disagreements between client and architect led to Utzon's resignation from the project in 1966. Many people saw this as a clash between the artist and the bureaucrat. Time has shown it to be more complex, raising questions about the whole purpose of architecture and its place in society. Meanwhile, the New South Wales government has appointed a panel of three architects to finish the job. The exterior will remain substantially as Utzon planned it, the design of which he wrote. The Sydney Opera House is one of those buildings where the roof is of major importance. It is a house which one will see from above, will sail around, because it sits on a point sticking out into a harbour, a very beautiful harbour, and this point is in the middle of a city. People will see it as a round thing, not as a house across a street. One could not have a flat roof filled with ventilation pipes. In those early days, Few people guessed the problems of construction which lay ahead. A magnificent site, but a difficult one. Some of the concrete piers go 70 feet below sea level to bedrock. The base, itself a complex multi-storied building. A massive platform like the base of an Aztec temple. The roof. It took six years to make working drawings for those sculptured forms. Six years of calculation and model testing, of frustration and disappointment before the solution was reached, a solution based on spherical geometry. The shell is made up of a series of concrete ribs. For construction purposes, each rib is divided into sections, varying in size and shape. But each one follows the curve of the same great circle. The main rib sections were manufactured on the site, then lifted into place by an erection arch, specially designed by the contractors. Computer calculations placed each rib in its theoretical position in space, so that when the final rib was put up, it was accurate to within a quarter of an inch. A staff member of Ova Arup and Partners, engineers for the project, said, It's probably true to say that the construction of the roof of the Sydney Opera House is on the boundaries of what is technically possible. For the roof covering, Utzon chose a traditional material, the ceramic tile. He collaborated with the Swedish tile firm to achieve the ideal texture, glaze and colour. The base of the building, the stairs and the broadwalk will be covered with reconstructed granite.
The spaces between the base and the shells will be filled with glass set in bronze-clad mullions. Now the third stage of construction is about to begin. The interior. Call it opera house, art center, or whatever you like, it will provide a magnificent setting for all the performing arts. The largest of the shells will cover a concert hall, seating 2,800 people, a home for the Sydney Symphony Orchestra, and a venue for some of the leading orchestras of the world. Directly below the concert hall is a rehearsal room. Below that, a drama theater with seating for 550 people. The smaller shells will cover a theater devoted to opera, ballet, recitals and large-scale drama. It will seat 1,500 people. On the east side at the upper level is a small hall with no fixed seating, suitable for recitals or receptions. A pair of shells standing on their own will cover a restaurant. On the ground floor, a chamber music room will seat 450 people. High in front of the concert hall, a balcony where you can drink, talk, watch the harbour waters. On the promenade, a coffee shop and an open-air cafe. Add to all these a maze of rehearsal and dressing rooms, workshops and storerooms, foyers and cloakrooms. It's been ten years so far, years which have changed the face of Sydney and given it a building unique in all the world. For the people of a city, a place where man will speak to man through the language of the arts. <laughs>